the Lankavatara Sutra says, Observe the sage in peace beyond birth and death. This is called not clinging, pure now and ever after. If there is a single one of all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions who did not achieve this through sitting meditation, then there is no such thing as complete Buddhahood. The Dasabhumika Sutra says, In the body of every sentient being there is the Vajra Buddha. This is just like the sun, luminous, perfect and complete. It is vast and unlimited, yet covered by the dark clouds of the five aggregates, so sentient beings cannot see it. When they meet with the winds of wisdom, the dark clouds of the five aggregates are blown away. Once they are gone, the Buddha nature shines out, bright, luminous and pure. The Flower Garland Sutra says, Vast as the reality itself, endless as space. It is also like the light of a lamp inside a vase that cannot shine out. Or like when hazy clouds come across the land all at once, from all directions, plunging the land into darkness. How can the sunlight be pure and clear? The sun's light has not been diminished. It is just obscured by the hazy clouds, and not seen by sentient beings. When the clouds part and are cleared away, the sunlight shines everywhere, its radiance pure and unobscured. The pure nature of all sentient beings is like this. It is just that grasping deluded thought, wrong views and dark clouds of the afflictions obscure the noble path, so that it is unable to fully manifest. On the other hand, if deluded thoughts do not arise, and you sit in pure stillness, then the pure luminosity of the sun, of great nirvana, arises spontaneously. A secular book says, Though ice comes from water, it is able to stop water. And when ice melts, water can flow again. Similarly, though delusion arises from reality, reality can get lost in delusion. But when delusion comes to an end, reality is revealed. The ocean of the mind becomes instantly and perfectly clear. This is the Dharmakaya, empty and pure. Thus a student who takes written words and spoken teachings as the path is like a candle in the wind, unable to dispel the darkness when its flame blows out. If they sit in purity, doing nothing, this is like a lamp kept inside a sealed house which can thus dispel the darkness and illuminate objects so that they can be clearly seen. If they understand that the source of the mind is pure, then all desires will be satisfied, all activities accomplished. With absolutely everything achieved, they will not have to go through further rebirths. Among sentient beings as numerous as the sands on the banks of the river Ganges, barely a single person exists who will attain this Dharmakaya. In a billion aeons, there may be no more than a single person who fulfills these criteria. If true sincerity has not arisen within you, then not even all the Buddhas of the three times, who are as numerous as the sands on the banks of the Ganges, can help you. Know this. Sentient beings who recognize the nature of mind liberate themselves. It is not Buddhas who liberate sentient beings. If Buddhas were able to liberate sentient beings, then since we have already met Buddhas, countless as the sand on the banks of the Ganges, why have we not accomplished Buddhahood yet? It is only because genuine sincerity has not arisen within us. We say we get it, but our minds do not get it. As the Dharma scriptures say, those who teach emptiness while keeping to worldly practices are imitating the ultimate path, and in the end they will not avoid being reborn in accord with their past actions. Thus, the Buddha nature is like the sun and moon in the world, or the potential for fire within wood. This Buddha nature, which exists in everyone, is also known as the lamp of the Buddha nature, the mirror of Nirvana. This mirror of vast Nirvana is brighter than the sun and moon, completely pure inside and out, unbound and unlimited. It is also like smelting gold. After the gold has taken shape and the fire has gone out, the nature of the gold remains unspoilt. Just so, after the succession of lives and deaths of sentient beings has come to an end, the Dharmakaya remains unspoilt. 
It is also like when a ball or lump of dirt is broken up. The individual particles are not destroyed. When rough waves cease, the nature of the water is not affected. Just so, after the succession of lives and deaths of sentient beings has come to an end, the Dharmakaya remains unspoilt. Once I had verified for myself the benefits of sitting meditation, I dispensed with the attitude of looking for the principle in books of written Dharma and strove to accomplish Buddhahood. There is not one person in ten thousand who does this. As an old book says, drawing food does not make a meal. If you just talk about food with people, how will you eat? When you try to remove a stopper, paradoxically, you often push it in more tightly. The Flower Garland Sutra says, There is a story of a very poor person who spent day and night counting the wealth of others without a penny of his own. Scholarship is very much like this. So those who read books should look into them briefly, then promptly set them aside. If they do not put them away again, how is this study of words different from looking for ice in hot water, or boiling water but hoping to find snow? Thus the Buddhas may teach the teachings, or teach the teachings by not teaching. In the true nature of things, there is neither teaching nor not teaching. If you realize this, everything else follows. The Lotus Sutra says, not true, not false, not the same, not different. The great master said, in this teaching of the real Dharma, everything is in accord with the truth, and it is ultimately no different from the profound principle itself. At first, deluded people see the precious stone and call it a rock. Then they suddenly realize that it is a genuine jewel. There is no difference between ignorance and wisdom. Just know that all phenomena are like this. Out of compassion for those who spend their lives seeing them as different, I speak these words and write them down with my brush. When you see yourself as no different from the Buddha, why would you continue to search elsewhere? He also said, When I first generated the aspiration for enlightenment, I cut off one of my arms and stood up straight in the snow from dusk till the third watch of the night, not noticing as the snow piled up around my knees in order to seek the unsurpassable path. As it is taught in the seventh volume of the Flower Garland Sutra, when you enter a state of absorption in the east, samadhi arises in the west. When you enter a state of absorption in the west, samadhi arises in the east. When you enter a state of absorption based on the eyes, samadhi arises in forms, showing that the manifestation of forms is non-conceptual, something that gods and humans are unable to comprehend. When you enter a state of absorption in forms, concentration arises in the eyes and you are freed from confusion. The eye that sees is not produced, nor does it have an intrinsic nature. I teach that emptiness is stillness which abides nowhere. The ear, nose, tongue, body and intellect are also like this. When you enter the state of absorption in the body of a child, samadhi arises in the body of an adult. When you enter the state of absorption in the body of an adult, samadhi arises in the body of an aged person. When you enter samadhi in the body of an aged person, samadhi arises in the body of a virtuous woman. When you enter the state of absorption in the body of a virtuous woman, samadhi appears in the body of a virtuous man. When you enter the state of absorption in the body of a virtuous man, samadhi appears in the body of a nun. When you enter the state of absorption in the body of a nun, samadhi appears in the body of a monk. When you enter the state of absorption in the body of a monk, samadhi appears in the body of a hearer. When you enter the state of absorption in the body of a hearer, samadhi appears in the body of a solitary Buddha. When you enter the state of absorption in the body of a solitary Buddha, samadhi appears in the body of a Tathagata. When you enter the state of absorption in a single paw, samadhi appears in all of your paws. When you enter the state of absorption in all of your paws, samadhi arises on the tip of a single hair. When you enter the state of absorption on the tip of a single hair, samadhi arises in all of your hairs. When you enter the state of absorption in all of your hairs, samadhi arises in a single moat of dust. When you enter the state of absorption in a single moat of dust, samadhi arises in all motes of dust. When you enter the state of absorption in a vast ocean of water, samadhi arises in a great blaze of fire. 
One body can give rise to countless bodies, and countless bodies can be one body. If you attain realization of this one thing, everything else follows. Everything is just this, the Dharmakaya, the guiding principle.